So now that we've talked about Kenra permanent hair color, let's talk about gray formulation. So speaking from experience, I would say that 70% of my color clients get their hair color because they want to cover their gray hair. They don't want to see it. They want it to be a long lasting result. They don't want it to wash out. So that's why it's really important that you follow the Kenra gray coverage chart when formulating to get any type of gray coverage. We want our clients to be happy. We want to give them quality service that they're paying for. And we want to give them those results. I sometimes joke with my clients, um, telling them, you know, let's get your sparkles covered. Um, it's, I have clients that come every three weeks because they, as soon as they see a gray hair, they want it gone. So it's really important to follow, like I said, the gray coverage formulation so we can give our clients those long lasting results that we guarantee using Kenra Color. So in your color swatch book, you can look at your gray coverage chart. Um, it's also in your color manuals. So there's lots of um, reminders here for you if you forget anything that I said today to go back and look at when formulating for gray hair. So with that in mind, let's talk about the gray coverage chart. So if your client is 25% gray, we know that something, what, what family do we go to to get any type of gray coverage? Our N family. So our natural, our natural ash, or our natural um, brown series. So when we need, we know that that's our go-to, but we need to know how much of that we need to use to cover. And then how much do we use of our desired level or our client's desired level, what they're wanting their end result to be. So 25% gray, we simply need 25% of the N, N, A, or N, B. The remaining 75% is your desired level. So if our client is 50%, we simply need 50% of the N and A and B and the remaining 50% of our desired level. Now, if our client is 50 to 100%, we've kind of flipped that first one because we need more gray coverage. So we need more of our formula to be contain our N series. So 75% of your formula will cover your N and A and B and the remaining 25% will be your desired level. Um, this is where a lot of stylists get hung up because they worry that they're only putting 25% of the desired level in there. Is it really going to turn out that desired level? And it will. I speak from experience. Um, I know it kind of makes you um, second guess yourself and rethink it. But you have to remember that gray hair is what? It's loss of pigment. So you're not really needing to go in and lift that pigment or change that pigment. You're simply needing to replace the pigment to cover the gray hair and get your desired level. How do you know how much gray your client is? Um, I look at it this way. So 25% is maybe just, they're just starting to get gray hair. They're just starting to see those sparkles. Um, maybe usually people, clients start to get gray in their temples, usually the front, right where you don't want it, but that's usually where you get gray first. So just a few, um, just a few sparkles. You're still seeing more natural color than gray. 50%, this is going to be that salt and pepper look. So it's going to be a e pretty even mix of their natural level with their gray. 50 to 100%, this is going to be, I mean, up to 100%, I think you're going to know you need gray coverage. Um, another thing that's very, very important, 80, anything over 80% gray, we must use 20 volume to get the full gray coverage. So another thing with Kenra, um, permanent hair color, we process for how long? 30 minutes. To get gray coverage, process time is 40 minutes. So let's do a couple gray color, um, gray formulations together, and then we'll um, go from there. And again, this chart right here is in the front of your color swatch book and also in your color manuals. So with Kinder, we have our five steps or less to formulation. So with that being said, you have your natural level. So this is 
Um, where are you coming from? What if um, you're looking at your client, you know, what are they? What shade are they currently? Um, a good thing is you can grab your natural swatch book and maybe compare it to give you an idea of what their natural level is. Then we need to think about their desired level. Um, where are they wanting to be? When they walk up a salon, what is their end result wanting to be? Volume. What volume of developer are we going to use? Are we just depositing? Do we need to use 10 volume? Are we um, lifting a shade? Are we needing to cover 80 to 100% gray? Do we need to use 20 volume? Are we lifting two to three levels, 30 volume, or 40 volume, three to four levels? And then we need to think about gray coverage. What percent of gray are, do we see gray in their hair and what percent do we see? And then finally, underlining pigment. Are we lifting? If we are, do we need to worry about the underlying tones that we're gonna bring out in the hair? Do we need to worry about um, replacing or using something to counteract those underlining tones with our A family or SM family, something to that effect. So we'll do some formulations um, mainly focusing on gray coverage. So let's start off with the client's natural level being a 6N. Let's, their desired level is a 7A. And let's say our client is 25% gray. So our client's 25% gray, their natural is a 6N, they're wanting to be a 7A. We need to worry about gray coverage, but let's talk about which developer we'll use. Um, first thing I do when I go to mix up is I figure out my developer, what I'm gonna use, and I put that in the bowl. So we want one ounce of what developer. In this case, we're lifting one shape. Do we need to worry about underlining pigment? Maybe a little. Um, gray coverage, 25%. So what developer do you think you would, would be best to use here? 20 volume. Okay, so what percentage of our formula needs to have our in family to make sure we get this 25% gray hair covered? 25%. So one fourth ounce of our formula is going to be an N, NA, or NB. What do you think would be best to use in this situation? We're going from a 6N to a 7A. I would go with a 7NA. That's we're wanting a cooler end result, and in our end family, that's our coolest choice, our coolest option for that. So 7 and A. So the remaining 3 fourths ounce will be what? Our 7 A. Do a couple more. Things about the ball here. can see this okay. There we go. Okay, so let's say our natural level is, we'll say a 5N, and the desired level is a 6RC. And we're going to say our client is 90% gray. So first, again, let's talk about developer. So we're lifting what? One shade. We need to worry about 90% gray. So our go-to developer would be 20 volume. What percentage of our formulation needs to have our in family in it to cover 90% gray? Right, 75%. So three fourths ounce, it's going to have our in family in it. So would we want to use, we want to stick with the same level that we're going to, so would we want to use a 6N, a 6NB, or a 6NA? Um, In this case, you could use a 6N or a 6NB. Um, I would say either one, you could try either one. Um, for this example, let's do, uh, let's do a 6NB. 
and then the remaining fourth ounce is our desired level, our 6RC. Now, this is where client or where stylists get hung up, like I mentioned before, on the fact that only a fourth ounce is our 6RC. Is the client really going to walk out true to tone 6RC? Yes, they will, and they speak from experience. Um, I have a couple clients that are probably 100% gray, um, at least 90%, and they're redheads. They love those vibrant red shades, and all the time I do this, where only a fourth of my ounce is the actual red shade, the RC or even the R's, um, and three-fourths is an N, and they walk out true to tone, the desired level, um, every time. You just need to remember, again, that gray hair is loss of pigment, so don't get too hung up on you're only putting a fourth of your formula is the actual desired level because what's really important is getting that gray covered and then you only need a little bit of desired level to give you your true to tone end result. So let's do one more together. So let's say our client is a 5N and their desired level is a 7A and they are 50% gray. So let's get our developer going. So we have one ounce of what? We're lifting two shades we're going to a cooler shade. So not only are we lifting, but we're wanting a cool end result. So do we need to worry about underlining pigment? Absolutely. Yes, which means we need to choose our cooler formulas to counteract any underlining pigment. So volume of developer, 50% gray coverage. We're lifting two shades. I'd go with 30 volume. So what percentage um, of our formulation to cover 50% gray needs to have our N family in it. Right, 50%. So a half ounce of what? What would we use here? We would go with a 7N, a 7NB, or a 7NA. Um, right, we want to stick with those cooler, um, cooler shades. We want to help counteract the underlining pigment as well as get us to this end result of a 7A, which is a cool blonde, a cool dark blonde. So we will go with our 7NA to get our gray coverage. So the remaining half ounce is our 7A, our desired level. Now, we'll talk more about this later, but this might be a good um, time where you can incorporate a little bit of blonding cream into your formulation. Um, since we are lifting two levels and we're going from pretty dark shade up to a 7 8, a cool dark blonde. This might be a great time to put in up to a fourth ounce of blonding cream into your formulation to help give you a little bit of extra push and also get you lifted up about a half a shade more. So you could just add in right in up to a fourth of blonding cream into this formulation. You don't need to add extra developer. And like I said, we'll get into more detail about this in a little bit um, when we talk about more of our blonding options. Um, but that would just be a, this would just be a good example of a time that you could incorporate that into your formula. So with gray coverage, let's recap a little bit. So which family in our Kendra color series, permanent color series, do you need to stick with to get gray coverage? Or do you need to incorporate in your formulation anytime you need to cover gray hair? Our natural family, our N's, our NA's, and our NB's. Oops. And how long do we process for gray coverage? 40 minutes. And what developer must we use if we're needing to cover 80% or more gray hair? 20 volume.
So hopefully um, that helps you with your gray coverage formulations a little bit more. And again, if you have any questions, um, refer to your gray coverage chart in the, in the front of your swatch book as well as in your color manuals. And hopefully I answered all your questions.